Non, c'est bon. Mesdames, Messieurs, bonjour et bienvenue à Porto Rostar à destination de Londres, Saint-Paul. Nous sommes actuellement en train de vous présenter tout d'abord, je vous demande de bien vouloir nous excuser pour le retard de notre roster aujourd'hui et je vous informe que nous poursuivons notre voyage avec un retard de 15 minutes. Je serai en mesure de vous confirmer l'heure d'arrivée à Londres saint françois à vous de la fin. Fourth Old York. Yeah. 
Making archives for another film in 20 years time. Uh, it's about it's, it's about H. J. Jer. But before we lose tonight, <laughs> thank you, Kat. So she was very stressed, but no one noticed. Ah, <laughs> she's very proud of us. Where has uh, Jim gone? Yeah. <laughs> I met I met a woman, Jim, who. <laughs> Something, I think it was Henry Miller. Has so little me. I'm gonna no, see if, if they're there. Gina, hi. <laughs> You're so pretty. <laughs> it's Jimbo here. How many friends do you think Jim Haynes has? I saw the list of names at the end of the film, <laughs> the long list of all the people. Now, I want to know how many hours are on the cutting room floor. How many hours of filming you didn't use? How many hours? We have a hundred and none hour of footage that I suggest lots of very interesting plays to produce. Finally the, the festival committee will turn them all down and I said, Well which Shakespeare would you like me to do? <laughs> we ended up doing Macbeth. Yeah, but the, but the witches when were nude, nude witches. So yeah, so, so there's already they had a little bit of juice. Yeah, yeah. So John and I and Sonia Orwell and others created the 1962 Writers Conference. What kind of writers came here? We had 70 novelists from all over the world. The stars were uh, really uh, Henry Henry Miller and Lawrence Durrell and Norman Mailer and Mary McCarthy and then later William Burroughs. Well, the difference between that concept of a writer's conference and the now highly popular book festival. What's the difference? The big difference is that we had 70 writers on the stage and uh, all at one time for a week. And every night we had a party somewhere. So actor Sir Lawrence uh, Olivier and uh, yeah, Peter Brook. And, yeah, it was quite a mixture of people. 1960 festival, I did... Uh, I produced uh, David Hume's dialogue concerning natural religion. That was magnificent. And which Harold Hobson in the Sunday Times gave it about a half a page and said it's one of the best productions in the, at the Edinburgh Festival this year. Did you have a full house for that? Are you kidding? The, my bookshop held about 60 people and uh, the Sunday Times does a, over a million sales every week. And Harold Hobson saying it's one of the best productions at the Edinburgh Festival. So more people wanted to come in the room, but we managed somehow or another do the production, serve coffee, and afterwards and threw it open to discussion. Is it today? Your son will arrive. There he is. What is it? That's not your son. Yes, it is. Oh my God, Jasper! I love you. Born in Edinburgh. 
fantastic. So we've got our two physical presences here. So what are you going to do when you grow up? I'm not going to grow up. <laughs> I refuse. Yeah, yeah, remember that. I remember, I mean, I met her too when I was like 16 or something. Yeah, because that would have been That would have been about that time yeah. too. In her house with some crazy people. Oh, it was really, it was kind of a wild time. You know, it was always like, Jim was in Paris and Jack was in Amsterdam. Kind of. See, let me see her again. I haven't seen her in 60 years. Yeah, she looks good. You have clearly had an absolutely huge impact on a huge, huge number of people. I think I had to see Edgy's film to realize that. And what an extraordinary trip this has been from the day I arrived in Edinburgh in 1956 to now. <laughs> David, could you just come in? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's better. You feel better now? You oh, come yes. Sort of, and do the smiley thing. <laughs> You're down the county three so I can hold my stomach out. <laughs> that's good. Right, everybody towards here for a moment. That's brilliant. That's lovely. And do the smiley thing again, please. I am done. done. Anybody, Anybody else? Yes. Come in. Oh, that's oh, that's oh, oh, right. right, that's good. Everybody look this way. That's good. Yes, hold it there. That's good. The rest of my day, do you know what I'm doing? Excellent. Excellent. You got it. Perfect, mate. So, the real business starts shortly. <laughs> and then the Chancellor's procession, of which obviously you're in, because this is your day. So I'm just about to line everybody up, and then. It's my privilege to present Jim Haynes with the honorary degree of Doctor of Arts. James Armand Haynes was born in Haynesville, Louisiana, to James Elmer and Mary Ann Haynes. Jim was sent to Scotland and posted to a listening base nearby in New, New Kirk Newton, and so began his love affair with the city of Edinburgh, which continues today. He also become a centre point for art and literature, language and philosophy, and is widely considered the forebear of the Edinburgh International Book Festival today. And in 1965, Jim was awarded the Whitbread Prize for outstanding contributions to theatre in Britain. And following his move south, he created the London Travers Theatre Company in 1966. At the same time, with Jack Henry Moore, Barry Miles, John Hopkins and Michael Henshaw, Jim also launched the International Times newspaper, later shortened to IT, which became the leading British underground paper in the 1960s 
and a much needed voice of a generation. The Arts Lab was an experimental space which brought together artists across multidisciplinary boundaries and produced a range of work, including Stephen Burkhoff's first production, and spawned thousands of similar lab spaces across Britain and the continent, including most famously the ICA in London, the Milky Way in Amsterdam, and the Entrepot in Paris. In 1969, Jim himself moved to Paris and became a visiting professor at the newly created University of Paris 8. And he continued to teach for 30 years. But alongside this, his teaching, Jim became co-founder of the sexual freedom newspaper, Suck, which published its first edition in 1960. Over 40 years in Paris, Jim's established his infamous Sunday night dinners which have become a regular social highlight for over 200,000 people and continue to this day, earning him the nickname Godfather of Social Networking. <laughs> These dinners complement his people-to-people -people travel guides to Eastern Europe, which forgo sightseeing and focus on meeting people in each city who were willing to welcome travellers to their homes. So Chancellor, in recognition of his contribution to the arts, <laughs> and his particular contribution to the development of Edinburgh as a cultural city, I invite you to confer on Jim Haynes the honorary degree of Doctor of Arts. to serve my American military service and fell in love with the city on first sight. And I had an idea to open the first paperback bookshop in Britain. People like my dear friend John Calder said yes and proceeded to support it. In 1959, the paperback bookshop and gallery opened and became an immediate success. In the festival of 1960, the bookshop also became a theater where we produced the hit of that festival with David Hume's Dialogues Concerning Natural Religion. Oops. Can you turn the page? <laughs> was uh, another project that found a resounding yes and stood as the precursor of what is now the Book Festival. I'm also grateful to accept an honorary Doctorate of Arts from Napier University for my cultural contribution to Edinburgh and to Scotland. Now I wish to thank all of you for coming today and for sharing these crazy projects and, and adventures. Jim on becoming our newest honorary graduate. It gives me great pleasure as the Chancellor of the University to welcome such an inspiring and intriguing figure into the Edinburgh Napier family. When we were giving Jim a round of applause, I was looking at the faces there and the energy towards this man is incredible, absolutely incredible. One of the university's values is innovation. Well, what we've heard today is a tale of innovation after innovation. Remember that everything we take for granted was at one time just an idea. From the paperback bookshop to the Traverse Theatre, Jim has consistently taken ideas, worked hard and made them a reality. Edinburgh Napier also has an international outlook, with students and graduates from more than 180 countries. Listening to Jim's life story, born in the US, moving to Scotland in his early 20s before heading to London and now living in Paris, it's clear geography should be a barrier to none. In these testing political times, international networkers are what this university seeks to create and I would encourage our students and friends of the university to take inspiration from Jim's story. But we are also delighted that Jim has chosen us to be the home of his living archive. This is an incredible collection of original documents and artefacts that explore Jim's impact on the cultural scene in Edinburgh and further afield. Jim, we thank you for entrusting us with this collection and the hope that you will remember this day fondly.
Congratulations again. Well done, Thank you. Thank you. Well done, Thank you for your kind words. In 25 minutes, we've gone from average yeah, exactly. to respectable. I've told you. Oh my God. I've told you. You've got to behave oh now. Behave now. <laughs> <laughs> I promise I will. <laughs> I'll keep my clothes on. <laughs> I can bear quite a few degrees, but very few are more worthwhile than yours. Oh, oh. Thank you. I was going to leave a million to Napier University. <laughs> 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 keep talking to left. <laughs> 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 Gooder, he rode Faust, <laughs> Joyce, he rode Finnegan's Wake. <laughs>
Okay, all look here. Ready, Jim? Chin, yeah, yeah, chin up yeah, yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. One chin more. Up. Chin up. Okay, here we go. Perfect. Just go away, Dr. Tori, Dr. Tori. I like it in Italian. Good morning, I'd like to welcome those passengers that joined us at Edinburgh Weasley. This is your 10.30 LNER service to London King's Cross. Calling out to Bedick upon Tweed, Newcastle, Darlington, New York. To drive into London at 14.51. Thank <laughs> you.